Hey guys, I'm gonna give this a second because there is a lag that I can never tell if I'm live or not. Now it says that I am, so hello. <laughs> Welcome to Creating a Personal Brand to Stand Out in Your Market. I'm Becca Boschich and I'm a photographer, artist, and business educator in Orlando, Florida. And I host alternative style shoots, but I also come to you live each week with business tips and strategy to help up-level your business. And uh, if you guys weren't with us last week, definitely watch the replay. That was Pricing for Profit. That was a very, very um, content-heavy 30 minutes that will really change the way that you view pricing yourself as a photographer. But tonight we're gonna be talking about personal branding as a way to stand out in your market. And this is gonna be a talk that is not only fantastic for photographers, but anybody else who is in the um, industry. So if you are a florist, a baker, an event planner, this all speaks to every single one of us. Okay. So I know if you were, gosh, okay. All right. So a lot of you are signing on already. That's cool. As usual, if you are watching the replay, if you can put hashtag replay in the comments, then I know that you were here. If you're here live with me, say hello and join in on the conversation. Please post your questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. If you have questions after the fact, you know that you can post them in the comments later and I am happy to come back and answer them for you, okay? So let's talk a bit about the saturated market, okay? I think that that term has just long been associated with photography. I'll admit, there's a lot of people that are photographers, okay? There's a lot of people that are in the wedding industry doing other types of businesses. A lot of florists, a lot of bakers, okay? But here's the thing, a popular industry has no bearing on your success. It's not the industry. The issue is not the industry, it's the marketing, okay? So I want you to stick in here with me, okay? Let me make sure I've got my notes and everything ready to go and then we will dive in, okay? Hey, Daniela, it's good to see you again. All right, so let me make sure I can see your questions here. Perfect. All right. So, oftentimes what we see people do when it comes to marketing is they will mimic what other people are doing. They will see someone that they feel is having some success or appears to be having success and they will do what they're doing to try to attract the client. But in fact, what will <laughs> what that's going to do when we're doing all the same thing is it's going to drive a client into a position that only allows them to see the price point as a difference between one professional and another. If we're all doing the same thing, all it boils down to for a potential client is whose price point fits their needs, okay? And we're not here to attract clients who value the deal over us and what we can offer, right? So just know there's nothing wrong with taking a look at what's going on in our industry when it comes to marketing tactics. The mistake that we tend to make is that we take this information and we don't look at it to decide if it's really right for us. And if so, then tweaking it into our own versions that'll appropriately fit our brands, our niche, and our place in the industry. Okay, so take what others are doing with a grain of salt and that is it, okay? There are so many ways that you can stand out in your market and utilizing a personal brand is just one of them. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight because it's one of the most important ways and most impactful ways that you can stand out in a market that you may feel is actually saturated, okay? So let's start by talking about branding and what exactly it is, okay? So a brand is the perception that your audience has about you and your business, and branding encompasses all the things you do to cultivate that message, okay? From the words that you use to the way that you say them, colors, logos, fonts, your vibe, down to your editing, posing, and client experience, okay? But ultimately, it's how you and your business makes your audience feel, okay? So let me use an example for you guys. Let's talk about Starbucks, okay? Lots of people spend lots of money at Starbucks when they could easily go somewhere else for less and probably find a similar quality coffee, okay? So why do people go to Starbucks, All right? Well, let's look at a comparison with one of their competitors. They don't have a lot of direct competitors that people would recognize, so we're gonna use the company Dunkin' Donuts as a comparison, okay? There's a distinct difference between the two. When you walk into a Starbucks, it has a higher end aesthetic, 
You typically see professionals working on their laptops, coffee in hand, or you might even see a photographer meeting a client there for a consult. The colors and music are conducive to enticing you to stay more than just a few minutes, okay? Their brand makes you feel like you wanna be part of what they have going on. And they emphasize this by personalizing your experience. That's why your name is called when your order is ready. That's why your name is written on your coffee cup. Studies show that our name is the sweetest sound to our ears and Starbucks knows that, okay? Now let's look at Dunkin' Donuts. The environment is bold and eye-catching, but a bit too loud and cartoonish to wanna to linger too much and too casual to impress any clients you're inviting there for a meeting. In fact, inviting clients to Dunkin' Donuts for a consult or a meeting might leave them questioning you and your value. Depends on the client. The customer service is not near as warm or friendly, at least that's been my experience. Um, it's not as warm and friendly as Starbucks, and you typically see people there for a quick order and exit, okay? Now, these are two very different brands targeting two very different clients, and there are people out there for both brands. There's not anything wrong with one or the other, okay? But what both brands are doing are attracting and repelling. Those attracted to Starbucks are probably not gonna be interested in Dunkin' Donuts, and those interested in Dunkin' Donuts are probably not interested in Starbucks but they both thrive and are successful all while offering similar products to their clients, okay? That's because their brands speak distinctly enough that it brings a particular type of audience to their business. They're not worried about each other's clients because the clients that Dunkin' Donuts are targeting are not the same people that Starbucks is targeting and vice versa. Make sense? Now, no business is for everyone. I want you to understand this, okay? No business is for everyone, all right? We each have a particular audience and neither is yours. Your business is not for everyone. What we want to do with our brain is to attract the right audience for us and repel the wrong ones, okay? People in the photography and wedding industry are so stuck on wanting everyone to like them and everyone to hire them. But if you're marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one because you don't stand out to any particular audience, okay? You won't resonate with anyone. And these days, people want to feel seen and heard and understood. They want someone that resonates with them, okay? And that's what personal branding does to help you stand out from the rest, okay? Now, when you're first starting out, it's normal to market to a wider audience. You may be trying different niches and taking a journey to see what it is that you're truly passionate about, but eventually you've got to get super clear on what it is you do and who it is you serve and what your brand is all about, or ultimately it will affect the success of your business, okay? So what is a personal brand? A personal brand is a brand based on your personality to connect more readily with your audience. It's ultimately how you make people feel about your business based on the person that you are, okay? It's the combination of your unique skills, experience, your personality, your values, and your story that stirs a positive emotional response in your audience, okay? And why does it do that for your audience? Because they can't relate to who you are as a photographer, a florist, or a baker, okay? But what they can do is relate to who you are as a person. And there is no other person like you in the world, okay? People may try to replicate your style, the copying content on your website. They may even have the same niche as you, but they will never ever be you. And being you is the one thing that no one else in the market can duplicate. And that's why personal branding gives you leverage in the market, okay? What happens with personal branding is you end up creating a market of one that attracts a certain type of person and repels another and finds success no matter how many people in the industry are offering similar products and services because you stand out differently from the rest, just like Starbucks, just like Dunkin' Donuts. Both are successful businesses, guys, no matter what your opinion is of one or the other, okay? They just have a clear brand message, a clear target audience, okay? But with us, we're not a big corporation, we're small businesses, okay? So we have the luxury of having the opportunity to personally brand ourselves uniquely so that no one else can offer what we do, okay? So what does a personal brand do? 
helps establish how you differ from other businesses like we just talked about. It attracts and repels like we just talked about, and it creates a market of one like we just talked about, okay? And what we haven't talked about is how it markets for you when you are not actively marketing, okay? And what I mean by that is for example, I personally have used the fact of my love for grilled cheese as a connection point in my personal branding. So it's one of my um, personal loves that's unique to me that I've shared regularly and I've done this because everyone may not relate to being a photographer, but they absolutely can relate to the love of food, okay? Guys, I have literally had message after message from followers when they've been to a restaurant or a bookstore, a party where they saw, heard, or ate something related to grilled cheese that reminded them of me. If all I did was talk about photography all the time, I probably wouldn't come to mind that often unless the topic came up. And photography just isn't an everyday topic in the average person's life, but food is. So just by including my love of grilled cheese in my personal brand, my brand markets for me when I'm not actively doing it, okay? And we're gonna talk about connection points in a minute. But I want you guys to know, I literally have had a follower um, while on vacation found a grilled cheese cookbook, purchased it, and mailed it to me. And if someone can be out every day in the public and they see something that reminds you of them, excuse me, right, reminds them of you, you're doing your personal branding right, okay? Because you are able to connect with them on a personal level with something that resonates with them so that when they're out in their everyday lives, you're still top of mind. And that's really, really important, okay? Now, we're gonna talk about those connection points in a minute, but right now I wanna to talk to you about defining your brand and then how to make it personal, okay? When you're defining your brand, this is the foundation of branding that most people do not consider. These are super important, so it's probably something you wanna write down if you don't have a pen and paper already, okay? But when you're thinking about defining your brand, you wanna think about what your audience, uh, what you want them to perceive about your brand, okay? You want to ask what your brand's unique purpose is. You wanna consider who are you serving, okay? What's your brand's personality, all right? What is its tone? What kind of language do you use? Do you use slang or is your tone maybe quiet, reserved, joyful, and boisterous? What's your client's challenge, problem, or pain point? And how do you provide a solution or create a transformation that addresses these problems, challenges, and pain points, okay? What's your ultimate why behind your business? Why are you doing what you do? And how does your brand make people feel or how do you want your brand to make people feel, okay? If you guys have to go back and replay this later, that is okay. But these questions are what you need to ask yourself to make sure that you can define your brand. This is the foundation that you need to help you send a clear message to prospective clients, okay? Like I said, most people don't consider these things to define their brand, and that's why their marketing may very well not have the effect they were hoping for. Their message isn't clear and defined, okay? So once you've defined these things, how do you communicate them? Especially if someone has a similar brand foundation as yours, like how do you stand out? Okay, so the most effective way in an industry full of people offering similar services as you is to make your brand personal. And one of the ways I built my personal brand was by choosing connection points, okay? Connection points are the things that you share about you and your personality that relate to your business all while resonating with your audience so they can relate to you in a more intimate way. Blending your personality with your brand foundation, okay? I want you guys to take out a pen and a piece of paper if you have not already, okay? And what I want you to do is write down a list of your likes, your dislikes, and any words that describe your personality, okay? I want you to take some time to do that. Don't have to spend a lot of time. You can set a timer for a minute and do it because I'm sure that a bunch of stuff will come out very quickly. But once you have that list, I want you to then circle the things that are the parts of you that relate to your brand that you are comfortable sharing with the world, okay? Now, when it comes to personal branding, you don't need to tell the world everything about you. There's a difference between being personal and being private. I've always said that. You don't have to share about your spouse or your kids if you don't want to, okay? Maybe that's too personal for you. 
but you know, maybe you have a much loved pet, a hobby you're passionate about, or a favorite food that might relate to your audience. You have total control over what you share and don't share. And I always like mentioning this to everyone because I think a lot of creatives are introverts and doing things like this scares them, okay? But what we're trying to do is make you relatable to your audience. What we do as professionals is magic to them. They can't relate to that. They can relate to our personality and who we are. Even if it's not exactly the same, they can relate to who we are as a person, okay? So choose personal aspects of yourself that reflect what you want your brand message to be that you're comfortable sharing and share those things regularly with your audience. That's in your website, social media, stories, blogs, all the above. Repeat those things across all platforms over and over. So when I say relates to your brand, let me give you an example, okay? So I don't know if some of you know who photographer Hope Taylor is, but I heard her once say that while she utilizes personal branding, the one thing she doesn't include is the fact that she loves rap music. Her typical client is a classic Southern bride who usually doesn't relate to that type of music. So what does she do? She shares the part of her personality that does relate. So she has an authentic personal brand that's reflective of her and resonates with her audience. She's strategic on what parts of her personality she shares and you should be too. Okay, so if you had a luxury wedding photography business for the classic Southern bride like Hope, sharing your love for rap may not necessarily relate to your audience while your love for Jimmy, excuse me, Jimmy Choo's shoes would. Make sense? So keep that in mind when you're deciding what relates to your brand and what you're going to share, okay? Now, this probably sounds like we're making all this all about you, okay? But in reality, this is about your client and your audience, okay? Personal branding connects you in a way that makes you relatable. When people feel that they can relate to you, they feel that you get them, they feel understood, and they feel a stronger connection to you. The person behind the business versus someone not utilizing a personal brand, and when someone feels that way about you, they're going to be more likely to invest in you, okay? Again, they can't relate to you as a professional, they can relate to you as a person, and that's what personal branding is all about, okay? because no one can duplicate who you are. So the connection points that you're choosing and the way you're developing this personal brand is individualistic from business owner to business owner to business owner. Make sense? No one can duplicate that. And guys, this is so important, especially for photographers, because I'm telling you, I see a lot of work that's very similar. And a lot of times that comes from people buying the same presets, which is why I highly recommend looking for a preset designer and having them help construct a customized preset for you that is unique to you only in the style and vibe that you're looking for that no one else can duplicate. Personally, that's what I've done. That's why my edit looks different than everyone else. I knew exactly what I wanted, but when I was first starting out, I didn't know quite how to execute that and I hired someone to help me stand alongside me and develop that. And I'm telling you, people notice it. So whatever you can do to help stay, I mean, there's just so many things that you consider when standing out, but because of examples like that, I'm just letting you know that personal branding is one way you can stand out when there's other people that might be doing things similar to you, okay? Do I have any questions at this point? I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds to respond. Okay. With personal branding, clients invest in you because of you. You are the primary reason before price point, before quality even. Because I'll admit, I've seen some people that may have some work that is needing a little bit of growth, but they're killing it out there because of their marketing. And at the same time, I've seen people whose work should be on a gallery wall that aren't doing so hot because their marketing needs serious help. Okay. Personal branding helps clients invest in you because of you, because they can't get you anywhere else. And that stands you out from the rest. It's the number one way to stand out in your industry. Okay. So let's go back to that list that you made. I highly, highly recommend choosing only four to six items from that list about you and your personality that you can consistently share in your social media, blogs, website, pricing guides, your emails, all of your written content, okay? Even in your spoken content, if you're doing videos, that counts too, okay? You wanna have continuity. 
But this gives your brand consistency and allows people to get to know you, your business, and your brand. Okay, like sharing any more uh, connection points than that can cause a lack of familiarity because there's no repetition to become a memory for them. And that's something important to think about. Okay, so choose four to six connection points that you can regularly share in your content. And again, choose carefully. Choose the parts of you that make sense to your brand and who you are trying to attract, okay? Now, sometimes people will mistakenly choose things that they're super passionate about and then not understand why it's not resonating with people, okay? It needs to be authentic while resonating with those you're trying to reach, okay? Like, so back to my love for grilled cheese. It's not the thing I'm most passionate about, but almost all people can relate to love of food, even if they don't like grilled cheese. That is specifically why I have chosen to share a food item in my personal branding, okay? This little fact about me brings me down to earth to people. And it's something that most people can relate with. So it has more impact than most of my other connection points do, okay? Again, what we do creatively is magic to people and they can't relate to that, but they can relate to your love of food or a particular hobby you have outside of your work or even the love you have for your dog or your cat, okay? Any questions so far? Because I wanna talk about brand voice because we, I believe, mentioned that earlier. Let me give you guys a second. You guys are quiet tonight. Oh, I forgot, some of you listen to me on your way home from work, so that's probably why. No need to comment, just drive safely, please. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about brand voice. Your brand voice is the distinct personality a brand takes on in its communications, okay? So that's whether it's written or spoken, right? So how do we put our personality into our brand's voice? I want you to think about the way that you communicate in real life, okay? What type of language do you use? Are you bubbly, sassy, maybe use a little slang, or maybe you speak more formally and don't use slang, okay? You need to make sure whatever your personality is in your language, that your personality comes through in your brand voice. Um, because once you meet a client in real life, if there's a different personality from what they perceived online through your words and videos, there's a disconnect that's going to happen. And we do not want that. Okay. Use language to match how you speak in real life. Okay. When it comes to written content, content, I'm gonna be honest with you, in the past, this was so hard for me to grasp this content. Con I am having trouble speaking tonight. I promise I can say my words. Um, <laughs> in the past, it was just really hard for me because not only did I used to be a dental hygienist, but I have a diploma in medical transcription. And in medical transcription world, grammar is king, okay? And proper language is all that you can use. Okay, they were the only things that were acceptable. You didn't dare start a sentence with and or because, but that's how we speak in real life. So it took me some time to really latch on to this concept, but I'm telling you once I did, it made me more personable with my clients and potential clients, okay? And when it comes to connecting with people digitally, we need to write the way we speak to get our personalities across appropriately, okay? So for branding purposes, keep your writing as though you're speaking to someone as though they're sitting directly across from you, maybe having a cup of coffee, okay? And speak in the same manner if you're creating a video. This will ensure that you have an authentic brand voice that matches up with your connection points, matches up with the personality behind your brand, okay? Give people what they should expect and look forward to, not surprises, okay? And that, my friends, is personal branding. Short and sweet, but a lot of content, usable content in less than 30 minutes, okay? But those questions I asked you earlier up to define your brand, review them, okay? It will help you define your brand. It's gonna help you hone in who you're speaking to and attract clients that you're looking for who will choose you over someone else, okay? but that's what personal branding does. It separates you from the herd of people that might be doing similar things to you, okay? And I'm telling you, time and time again, I have seen people that have been, and you've, I'm sure, been in the situation too, where you've paid more to shop at Publix versus Walmart. You paid more for a hairstylist because you valued the person they were than the cheaper hairstylist 
down the street that gives horrible customer service. There are things to think about, okay? Any questions, guys? I know this is, we had like a neck and neck vote on a topic this week, but um, so I made the final choice for personal branding. I love this topic. I love niche and branding. It's just so fun to talk about because honestly, it's just full of psychology. I find the way that we are as people to be just madly interesting. And, um, you know, it's interesting how we respond based on, you know, how people treat us, how we are spoken to, what we're exposed to. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Again, if you have any questions, post in the comments and I am happy to come back. All right, have a great night. I will talk to you soon.